In the entire industry of both video games and computer components, everyone, especially those that are just entering into this nice realm of existence, have one simple question. Are the newer drivers better than the older ones? Also, is the gaming performance improved with the new drivers or not? Well, today, with this video, I aim to tell you just that if there's any performance gain with the newest drivers versus the older drivers. This video also serves as a proper argument to those friends, relatives and people that you may know that will tell you that they do not update their drivers, computers and smartphones because updates just makes everything work slower or not at all. And let me know if this hits too close to home, because it certainly does. The graphics card used in this video is the MSI RTX 2070 Super Trio model. Not only is this a really good graphics card thanks to its great cooling system, but it is also very stable and it might be a model that you are already using. The old driver used is the first driver that has support for the RTX 2070 Super which is the 431.36 WHQL driver. This may not be the same driver that was provided with the graphics cards on day launch, but it is pretty close in terms of the release date. In fact, in many ways, this driver is one of the first drivers to be available for everyone on the consumer market. This driver was released on July the 9th, 2019, and the new driver that we will be using is the 461.72, released on Thursday, February the 25th, 2021. So basically the latest driver released. Yes, I know that there is a hotfix driver released, but that does not really make any difference in the case of this video. Also, I have decided to also test this with the usual new-ish driver, the 457.30, released on November 9th, 2020. The video games used for testing are Cyberpunk 2077, updated to the latest version, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, also updated to the latest version, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and the benchmark of reliability GTA 5, also updated to the latest releases. And there might be some people that will ask me, but why aren't you testing this with the latest games like Red Dead Redemption? Or why aren't you testing this with AMD graphics cards as well? And to those people, all I can say is that if you want to support the channel in a direct way, then in the description below, you can find the links for the Patreon and the Subscriber Star pages. Hope this answered your question. Anyway, moving on, the testing process is pretty simple. First of all, all drivers will be completely removed from the system using DDU or Display Driver Uninstaller. This ensures no issues that can be traced back to malfunctions with the older drivers. And we start with the first game, which is Cyberpunk 2077, one of the most anticipated video games of the last 5 years and also one of the biggest disappointments in the industry. The game is running in 1080p with all the settings turned to their maximum and RTX is also turned on. Also, DLSS is set to the quality settings. In addition, the vertical synchronization is disabled. And you will immediately notice how Cyberpunk 2077 does not have an entry for the oldest of the drivers, the 431.36. Why you may ask? Well, because Cyberpunk 2077 refuses to start with that driver installed. It's not like bad performance or glitching out. The game just does not work past the first splash screen. It just does not work. Technology, eh? Anyway, we still have two drivers to compare. The 457.30 released on November the 9th, 2020 and the 461.72 released on Thursday, February the 25th, 2021. And as you can see here, the game on average gained 3 frames per second, both in the average frame rate section and also in the low 1%, which is not bad at all for just a driver update. Unfortunately, this does not change my view of the game, no matter the improvement brought by just the drivers alone. The next game in our testing is The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, which is basically a modern masterpiece, which also happens to be based on a series of books that are also pretty good. The game is running in 1080p with all the settings turned to their ultra preset. Also, Hairworks is disabled and the vertical synchronization is disabled as well. And in this game, there are some interesting things to see. First of all, when compared to Cyberbug 2077, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt did work alright with the older driver, and the overall gains from the older driver to the newer drivers are around 1 to 2 frames per second, which is quite low. In fact, it is very close to the value that might be considered just a margin of error. However, what is good to see is that from the older driver, the low 1% frame rate doubled, which at first glance you might not be that impressed, but this can make the difference between a game that sometimes will be lagging in crowded areas to a game that will barely show any lag at all. 
The next game tested is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, also running in 1080p, with all the graphics settings turned to their maximum values. The game is also running in DirectX 12 mode and has its vertical synchronization disabled. Also pure hair is set to off by default. And this game has probably the best improvement to performance of all games tested, as each driver brings out at least 10% in gains in some areas of the frame rate. However, the biggest improvement is with the newest driver, which increases the average frame rate from 85 frames per second to 133 frames per second. In fact, in between the old driver and the latest driver, this game has gained over 50 frames per second in each category. This is a good showcase of what happens when not only the drivers are optimized, but also when the games are optimized as well. I'm not talking about just the gains in terms of the frame rate per second, but also how consistent the differences are between these drivers. And the last game to be tested is GTA 5. And contrary to what I've said at the beginning of this video, that this game is not really the highlight of reliability, well, GTA 5 has shown the best results in terms of the stability. As is the usual, the game is running in 1080p, with all the settings turned to their maximum values and vertical synchronization disabled. While the overall gains are not as impressive as those shown with the Shadow of the Tomb Raider, GTA 5 has gained consistently across the board. From the initial press release driver that was 431, the 457 has brought an increase of at least 10 frames per second in all categories, while the latest driver, the 461, further increases the performance by gaining around 3 frames per second in both the average frame rate and the 0.1% frame rate categories. And after all these tests, we can draw a simple conclusion, that updating your graphics card driver actually does improve the performance and stability in games. However, this depends on a lot of things, starting with how good or bad a game is made and optimized. Also, new technologies benefit more from drivers than others. The perfect example being DLSS and RTX implementations on modern games that more than likely will benefit heavily on driver updates in the future. If you like this review, perhaps you may consider subscribing for more, and also if you want to support the channel in a direct way, then in the description below you can find both the links for the Patreon and the subscriber star pages of the channel.